The Intel Compute Stick, a small, energy-efficient and x64-capable computer that can hide behind any monitor or TV. Was it any good? Can you still use it today? Let's talk about it. The Intel Compute Stick is a USB stick-sized but fully functional computer that was meant to compete with small form factor media center solutions. According to Intel, it was designed to be smaller than a conventional desktop while still offering comparable performance. The Compute Stick's party trick is the male HDMI connector. With it, the stick can be directly plugged into any HDMI compatible device and hide behind it, creating a slick, all-in-one solution for office workspaces or media centers. The first version of the Intel Compute Stick was released back in Q2 of 2015 and packed an Intel Atom X5 processor with 4 cores, 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of eMMC storage. It came with Windows 8.1 and later Windows 10 pre-installed. If you wanted to avoid the Windows tags and get one with Ubuntu installed on it, your only option was a model with 1GB of RAM and 8GB of eMMC storage. Why this decision was made? I have no idea, since you can just install Ubuntu on a Windows Compute Stick anyways. In Q1 of 2016, Intel decided to launch two updated versions of the Intel Compute Stick. A higher performance edition with Intel M chips, 4GB of RAM and 64GB of eMMC storage, and a budget edition with an updated Atom X5 chip, 2GB of RAM and 32GB of eMMC storage. Since then, no new compute sticks have been released. There has been a product with a similar name called the Neural Compute Stick, but these do not have anything in common. The media reception had mostly positive feedback for the Intel Compute Stick. The Verge called it a pretty neat gadget to carry around with you, even if it's not something you'll plug in every day. CNET called it a product everyone should keep around in the drawer for just-in-case use, and Engadget wrote, no matter how you use it, it'll make you rethink your notion of what a PC can be. To be fair, these are reviews about the second generation Compute Stick. The first version had less favorable reviews, mostly because of the lack of performance and some teething pains regarding Bluetooth. Obviously, I had to get one for myself and see how much of this price is still valid. I scoured eBay for a little while and found one for 25 euros plus shipping. It is the SDK1 832SC model with an Intel Atom X5 Z8330, 2 gigs of RAM and 32 gigs of eMMC storage. It was manufactured in October 2018 and was brand new in box when I got it. This model usually goes for around 45 to 50 euros used, so I'm quite pleased to have found this deal. My unit came without Windows, so I installed Windows 10 32 bit. I tried to get 64 bit to run on it, but the drivers gave me a lot of issues, and without them, the stick would crash quite frequently. Since the stick only had 2 gigs of RAM anyways, I thought 32 bit would not be an issue. Oh boy, was I wrong. More on that later. After installing Windows, I turned off all eye candy and started testing. Let's talk about performance. I will split the performance topic into two chapters. The first part is general usability and benchmarks, and the second part will be about gaming. And trust me, you don't want to miss the gaming part. Usually when I benchmark a system, I use Cinebench and Blender for CPU and GPU performance. But guess what? Both of these do not support 32-bit systems anymore. Cinebench seemingly never supported 32-bit and the last version of Blender to support it was version 2.8, so that's what I will use. Before we get into that, I have to say that the biggest bottleneck of the Intel Compute Stick is the 2 gigs of RAM. Windows 10 uses about 1.2 gigs just by existing, which leaves 800 megabytes available for everything you want to run. For this reason, I have opted to record my computer screen with a camera instead of using screen recording software. I am not quite sure that this little PC would have survived otherwise. I know it sounds crazy, but general usability is really not that bad. If you are in a pinch, you could get most basic activities done with it. Sure, you will notice that it is not quite as fast as a modern computer, but browsing the web or editing a document works quite well once the respective tool has decided to open up. At idle, the CPU sits at about 8% utilization, but it will shoot up to 100% as soon as you start doing something. Opening a folder? 100%. Starting Google Chrome? 100%. Looking at your screen at the wrong angle? 100%. In general, the entire experience feels a little bit sluggish, but everything works, even if it takes some time. As for benchmarks, I was able to run PC Mark 7 and Blender 2.8 with the Classroom demo. PC Mark 7 finished with 2418 points in the overall performance benchmark, and the Blender Classroom render finished in 4 hours, 38 minutes and 32 seconds. To put that into perspective, my Windows computer with an i5 12600K and an RTX 2060 managed 10,445 pounds in PC Mark 7 and finished a classroom render in 5 minutes 53 seconds. Of course, this is not a big surprise to anyone, but I think context helps. Now, let's talk about gaming. It is obvious that this tiny computer won't run any modern games, but what about some lighter ones? I decided to run Portal 2, Half-Life 2 Lost Coast, Minecraft, Fallout 3 and League of Legends, as these titles tend to run on any modern toaster. Again, RAM is the biggest bottleneck for the Intel Compute Stick, as the integrated graphics chip uses RAM as video memory. Another 2GB of RAM would make a big difference for at least some of these games. 
disk space is another big issue. Apart from Minecraft, I wasn't able to install any of these games onto the internal eMMC drive. Instead, I used an external drive connected to the USB 3 port. I tried to use the SD card slot, but that was just a big mess. SD cards are not meant for this type of workload. Starting with Portal, every setting is low as possible and a resolution of 1920 by 1200 the compute stick achieved a surprisingly steady 30fps, with some dips into the 20s but also jumps into the 50s. Half-Life 2 Lost Coast with the same settings showed similar performance, even though the frame rate tanked a little more during combat. For some reason unknown to me, both games for the most part seem to have a pretty steady at 30fps even though VSync was disabled on game level and driver level. Continuing with Minecraft, I turned off every single piece of eye candy and lowered the resolution down to 720x480, but the lack of VRAM was just too much for this game. I managed to squeeze out 4-6 FPS on a server within my local network. Fallout 3 decided to not launch at all, crashing while loading from the main menu into the game. Finally, League of Legends. Remember how I thought 32-bit Windows wouldn't be an issue? <laughs> yeah, League of Legends doesn't run on 32-bit systems anymore. The launcher will let you download the game, but it won't start. So all in all, that's a no for gaming on the Intel Compute Stick. The Compute Stick was designed to hide behind a TV or monitor, never to be noticed again. While this may technically be possible, the tiny fan inside the stick makes high-pitched sound during operation. It is technically not always on, but since the CPU jumps to 100% as soon as you touch the mouse, noise-free working is more of a myth. As for thermals, the CPU barely gets into the 60s under full load, while boosting to 1.7 GHz on all 4 cores surprisingly often. Lastly, let me tell you about the issues I had with the stick while testing it. For one, my USB peripherals decided to stop working every time I added a new storage medium to the stick. It doesn't matter if it's the microSD card or an external hard drive. I can only assume that this may be caused by inadequate power delivery from the USB ports. This however may not be an issue for most users, as these sticks are meant to be hideaway just exist type of computers. The bigger issue however is the 32-bit fiasco that I experienced. Yes, you can install 64-bit windows on the Intel compute stick, and with enough time, you may be able to get it to work reliably. However, any workload apart from the most basic web browsing or office tasks will overwhelm this tiny computer, so it's just not worth it. So, would I recommend it? Yes and no, hear me out. I would not recommend running Windows 10 on this machine. It is doable and in a pinch you could get by for a few days, however any bigger task will bring it to its knees. If that is your goal, you should get the higher spec version with the Intel M chips. But, there are a few use cases I can see for the Intel Compute Stick, such as emulation, smart TV duty or even a headless microserver. There are not many systems out there capable of running x86 and x64 based software with such low power requirements. Maybe I will try to run a headless docker server in a future video, stay tuned for that. For now, that's all I have to say. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment down below. Until next time, bye!